Hello friends and welcome to another episode of MPS Connections. I'm your host AJ Hoffman. I'd like to thank our sound engineer Abby Young for doing all the technical work and our guests for being here today. Today I'm joined by the Space Farmers from Jefferson and from Dow High. Uh, why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourselves real quick. Jackson, let's start with you. All right, I'm Jackson post -Rassold. I'm a seventh grader at Jefferson. I'm Gabe Nix and I'm an eighth grader at Jefferson. Um, I'm Russell Kelsick and I'm also an eighth grader at Jefferson. I'm Margaret Hitt and I'm a senior at Dow High School and I'm the president and founder of the Dow High Space Farmers. Margaret, let's start with you. Yeah. You are the originator of the space farmers in our area. So where did that idea come from? Yeah, well, we didn't actually start with space farming as like an idea that has popped out of nowhere. Um, this actually started out from our FTC robotics team, the Techno Huskies, and that the theme that year was on space. And um, we were outreaching at our local farmers market, and we were asking farmers how they would grow their plants in space. So. Uh, we asked around, and the most interesting answer was um, we could use hydroponics to grow plants. And we became really interested in that. And we were asking around in different nurseries if we could do hydroponics as like some sort of experiment um, as part of our um, FTC robotics uh, like project. And um, so we asked around the Midland area. We didn't get any responses, unfortunately. But we did get one response from the Growing Beyond Earth program down in Florida. And um, we did a bunch of training, and we started our first experiment um, with space farming. And I really enjoyed um, the research aspect of it, because a lot of things like in middle school that you do is a lot of testing. Like um, there used to be Science Olympiad, and uh, it was a lot of test taking and stuff, but, which of course I enjoyed, but I also really enjoyed the research aspect of it and seeing how like, I can create my own experiment and then see what the results are. So yeah, that's basically how it got started, and it's been growing from there. Awesome. Now, I heard about this before, and I'm sure I'm going to get this wrong, so you correct me, mm -hmm. but you've been kind of collaborating with NASA scientists? Sort of. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, well, I mean, in the Growing Down Earth program, we have a thing called Chat with NASA Scientists. So um, I think it's like the second week of every month. We um, There's like an online Zoom meeting, and the NASA scientists like Dr. Joy Massa and, and Dr. Trent Smith um, they come and talk about um, some research project that they're doing, or they invite some other guests um, that are also NASA scientists, and they talk about their own project that has to do with like plant um, space research and such. Um, and a lot, one thing that um, I really enjoy about chat, the chat with NASA scientists is that we can um, ask some questions about our experiment. Like this year, we had an issue where, um, well, not necessarily an issue, it's more like an interesting observation that we saw with our um, red wing lettuce plants was that there was like a lot of purple dots on irradiated, um, which is like plants that have radiation on them. Um, but we didn't see any purple dots on the non-irradiated plants. So we were, you know, we asked NASA scientists what their input is and they didn't know. So now we want to really look into that. Um, so NASA scientists help, um, we collaborate with NASA scientists to see like what, uh, how we can improve our experiment and also, like, um, if they have any insight of how we can um, do more stuff with our experiments as well. I'm going to put you on the spot, but are there any astronauts you want to name drop right now or, or uh, oh. talk about that you've gotten to, <laughs> to converse with? Well, um, the Dow High Space Farmers um, has two programs that we're doing. One is the Grand Beyond Earth program, and the other one is NASA Hunch. Um, this one's more about biomedical engineering, and right now we're working on a sweat cortisol biosensor to test, um, objectively test stress in astronauts. And last year we were able to go to Houston to share a project, and we met with astronaut Victor Glover, and that was really cool, and he was very psyched about our project. Um, if you don't know who Victor Glover is, he's one of the Artemis astronauts who's going to um, go on a mission to the moon pretty soon. Can, can you guys tell me about some of the projects you're, you're currently working on? So one of the projects we're working on right now is um, we're testing if CO2 is going to affect the growth of the plants. And we have done one trial, trial previously where we've seen a dramatic difference of CO2, but we want to test if, like, positioning or what type of box, we want to see if some variables would affect the growth in general. So right now we're doing both CO2, but they're in different spots than usual. And so I'm... Um, I think it's going to be really interesting to see if just the general environment is going to have a 
shift in the plant growth. Cool. Jackson, how often do you guys meet? What kind of projects do you work on? Uh, we meet on Tuesdays. And then for those that are also in another club, we do that on Wednesdays, so we can double check two days a week. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. And adding on to what Russell said, last year um, we put the carbon dioxide in the corners, which it was what we noticed was higher highs and lower lows. What? So the plants in the middle were much larger than the plants on the than the average. Okay, explain that to me. How how does that work? You mean you, you put so the in? Yeah. We have our grow box. Okay. We had the carbon dioxide in each corner, and what happened was because it's so cold, the plants on the edges were affected by the temperature, and not as much as the carbon dioxide. Okay. So this year we put it in a fan and had it blowed onto it. Like directly onto it. Yeah. Did you guys have any separators inside the grow box or or no? Uh, there's just. Walls. It's just, oh, there are like little walls, like plexiglass walls or something, or am I getting this wrong? I think like a plastic, kind of. Yeah, okay. it, it's reflective, so like on the inside of the chamber, it, it reflects the light, so the light stays inside the chamber, but you can still see like on the plants inside. Gotcha. Yeah. And then another issue we had this year, when we were growing in previous trials, we have two grow boxes, and our second grow box always um, produced shorter plants. So in our last trial, when we grew um, box A with CO2, they were a lot um, bigger than box B. So now we're growing both with CO2, and we're moving box B around to see if that was the reason those plants were shorter. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. What do you guys plan to leave behind when you graduate? Um, so this year for my science fair project, I'm doing one that involves plants. So space farmers definitely inspired me to do that, and I learned a lot from both, so I definitely want to remember everything that I learned from both of those, too. Cool. Russell, can you, can you tell me about some of the previous projects you guys have worked on? So I think last year, one of the trials we did was an anti-gravity trial where we put a rotator on a wall, and we put seeds with a fertilizer and let them grow and see how like microgravity would affect their growth, and that was a really interesting trial. We also have done different fertilizer, not, not what was it? Controlled Just with this. in the box, we did different fertilizer in each plant, and then we did a control plant as well in one box. And so just to see if fertilizer had a, big or a bigger effect than we originally thought. And the trial that I think really got us interested in CO2 was the one CO2 box in the corners like Gabe mentioned earlier and a uh, previous trial um, one CO2 uh, I think it was box eight we had put CO2 in it with the fan and they were a lot bigger but um, the temperature would like fluctuate so we had a had a heating pad on the bottom to make sure it would stay so it was really interesting to find solutions and to the problems that we had in these trials. Is this something you guys plan on, on continuing when you get into high school? I think that we will continue to do space farmers, but uh, next year for space farmers here, um, we might not continue with CO2 just because we've done it for two years. And gotcha. uh, this year will be interesting to compare the data. Though. That makes sense. Do you, do you have any ideas lined up for what you might do next year? Uh, Is that too early to... Too early to talk about. Well, I don't personally, but right. there is someone that's not on this podcast that wants to contribute and okay. do more. Cool, cool. Margaret, is this the way you envision space farmers to kind of be? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's it's much bigger than I was um, imagining. Like, I know in, in Jefferson, when I first started, it was only two people um, on the team. It was me and um, another person who um, moved away. Um, and now at Jefferson, it's a self-sustaining club, and there's a lot of students involved and interested in it, which I find is really cool. And in terms of, like, Dow High Space Farmers, um, we have a lot of people interested, and, you know, we host some workshops for students to learn about data analysis and um, how to present their um, data and information well. And, uh, yeah, we, I, think, I think Dow High Space Farmers has grown a lot. You've got a pretty big following at Dow High. I mean that's that's awesome. It's it's nice to see that you've you've garnered that much interest in it. And you know, a student student started thing, 
and uh, you know you've also left something behind for for the school that you were at before in middle yeah. school. So I think that's really neat. Yeah, and um, another thing that um, I'm doing uh, as part of the CAS project, me and another senior, um, since we're both IB diploma candidates, uh, one, our CAS project is um, bringing space farming to elementary schoolers. Um, so we're working with PYP coordinators um, to have um, second graders who are learning about the plant unit um, be introduced to space farming um, through a four-week curriculum program. So yeah, that that's coming up and We'll hopefully, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> That's cool. And I think we should add a special thanks to Miss Brillhart for all of this because she is really the one who's. I need. Mean, there's a ton of people who go into this, but she's a huge contributor to yeah. both of these clubs. I think. Where would you like to see this going forward, Margaret? Um, Just to kind of wrap this whole thing up. It's a good question. I mean, since I'll be I'll be leaving next year, I I hope that um, like Dowie Space Farmers is able to. Um, continue what they're doing. I know that the current juniors this year are really strong, and they they know what to do. Um, and hopefully, they will uh, continue space farming. And I, I hope also for Jefferson that um, it continues. And maybe in elementary school, we'll have like a whole district of space farming. <laughs> That'd be really <laughs> and cool. Space yeah. Farm. yeah. Well, that's our show this week. I'd like to thank you guys all for being on. Uh, thank you, Jackson, Gabe, Russell, and Margaret, all for making the time to do this after school. I really appreciate it. And I'd like to thank all of our, our listeners around the district, around the country, and around the world for tuning in. We've launched a din district Instagram page. You can follow us by searching the handle at Midland Public Schools. You can do that for all of our social media pages. If you have a story idea, a photo op, or an event you'd like to promote, you can email us at communications at midlandps.org. Thanks again for listening to MPS Connections. We'll tune in next week.